Well, if you're a regular listener to my programme, you'll know that I feature occasional interviews with Ridian. The last time I talked to him was in Swansea, where he was appearing at the Grand Theatre, and that was just before Christmas. A lot has happened since. And here I am in the village hall at Truffalong, which is very close to Brecon, and you'll be wondering why. So, uh, Ridian, why are we in Truffalong? Well, first of all, hello, Philip. It's uh, great to be back on Apple FM. Uh, well, the reason why we're in Truffalong is because it's my home village, and uh, my new album, uh, One Day Like This, uh, was partly funded through uh, an organization, a website called Pledge, where fans get involved and they pledge for various things. And uh, they've been hugely supportive. And one of the pledges was a home concert. So um, here we are in July, a few, few months after the release of the album, we're doing the, the home concert. And uh, I thought it'd be nice to include this interview as well within the show. Well, it's great to be here, and it's great to do the interview. Now, I'm going to go back to your CD that you have just released. You went about this in a very different way. You did it in a very independent way. What was that? Well, uh, yeah, it was independent. Uh, there is a record label uh, attached to it, but it's essentially my record label, Futura Classics, uh, combined with my uh, management company. Uh, I didn't want to create a record label with, like, Ridian Limited or whatever, because that you, you're open to be shot down, really, the press and everything. So for Tura Classics, it's a step removed. Uh, um, but my management are phenomenal. I got together with them about a year and a half ago. Uh, in the first meeting, we said, we need to make an album. Um, and then uh, it, took, it took about a year, 12 months, to think up the... Uh, the concept and the orchestra and the songs I wanted on the album and I was very much the orchestrator um, not literally of the songs, I had an orchestrator for that John Lubbock but uh, as far as compiling the album and how it looked how it sounded, every decision came from, from me so in that respect it was certainly independent Yeah, Making an album costs a great deal of money how did you finance it? I, I'm broke uh, now, uh, and, uh, but thankfully the, um, uh, my uh, amazing fans uh, help with, the, with this pledge, this website, which more and more artists now are doing because uh, a lot of artists who aren't with a major record label would like to keep making music and pledge is probably the best website form of, of, of making money independently and it's fan en engaging as well so they can be part of the creation and I've done a lot of videos that if you're not part of Pledge people can't see and uh, I invited some pledges if they pledge to come and see the orchestra day etc so um, it, it's crowdfunding and, and a lot more as people are doing that John, John, John Barrowman has done it since I did it um, Kerry Ellis is doing it uh, and when I was doing it uh, um, Slash from the Guns N' Roses guitarist was doing it for a, I think a film he was doing so I, I felt if it's good enough for Slash, it's, it's good enough for me. <laughs> uh, having said that, it's been, um, uh, there have been ups and downs, you know, and I'm so grateful I've got patient fans because uh, these pledges take time to fulfill. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting through them, and uh, tonight I'm really enjoying. Well, one of the aspirations you said to me in the last interview was, I want a number one. <laughs> in the classical charts. Well, you did, didn't you? Did I say it like that? No, no, you said it very discreetly. Oh, right, right, right. I think you said... I probably did. I think you really said I'd really love it. I'd love it. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I just because just my mum is over there, and she probably, I won't never get, which is there. But I, I, I did, I was passionate about achieving something this year. And I've always led my life like that, really, kind of setting myself a challenge and trying to fulfil that challenge. And this year, I wanted to do a, a classical album uh, and uh, get a number one classical album because I didn't want to you know, perform for years and not have that. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased to say that one day like this, my album has been uh, number one for 10 weeks in the classical charts, which is um, very pleasing. Do you have any difficulty getting it played on the major channels on the airways because it's independently produced? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I've always... I wouldn't say struggle because I'm not really a, a radio played artist in that a playlist, most radio stations such as, you know, your radio ones and twos, etc., they have a playlist. So to get on that playlist, there's a committee of people that meet once every week and they decide who's going to go on playlist A, B and C, A being the main playlist. Uh, and I remember my third album, Waves, which is a pop record, we tried to get radio play then, but it was a case of there was somebody on the panel 
who wasn't present, who was a supporter of mine, and he couldn't get in the push. You know, he, he wasn't there to say, what about putting Ridian's song on? So if he's not there in that meeting, you don't get on. And then you... So it's tricky. With this album, I, I never expected to get radio play. I mean, it's great that independent stations and smaller stations and uh, they, they play me, like one-offs and stuff, that's fine. But Classic FM was important to get play because I see this album really as a Classic FM album. But that's been tough as well because every, every radio station has a formula and if, if they listen to it, they go, well, the whole album doesn't sound like a Classic FM album. And, and Decca, who are the classical uh, label uh, that are associated, with, obviously, with Universal... They sit down with artists like Catherine Jenkins and even Alfie Bow, and they sometimes change the songs to sound, to make it sound right for Classic FM, which I didn't know. But they've had to play me, because we've been in the top, the, the top ten for a while, and they play me on a Sunday. <laughs> so, yeah, it uh, answers your question. Yeah, there are a lot of nodding heads out there in the audience saying, yes, 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 we understand that. Because a lot, a lot of people in the audience felt that you haven't received the airtime that you should have done. But uh, they've been fantastic supporters, haven't they? I mean, they've really been the bedrock of what you've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. My fans, who are many of them are here today in front of us, they, they are without doubt uh, the most loyal, best fans I could wish for and uh, um, hugely supportive. And they know their music. If I get frustrated, I think they feel my frustration with me even before I air my frustration because they know that there's resistance a lot of the time. But it's not all uh, doom and gloom, you know. It's, life isn't easy, and the music industry certainly isn't easy. You just have to uh, find your niche and uh, work at that and try and take hold of any opportunity that comes available. And, and we've done that. It's been a battle, but we've done a, an independent album that's been number one for ten weeks, and uh, the classical world have sat up and take note of, they've taken note of that. And we were even in the tw top 20 in the mainstream charts. So then that means that every week the charts come out and the managements of all the biggest artists in the world, including Adele, Beyonce, will see th that name in there. And, and I'm not saying Beyonce's manager is going to know who I am, but I had emails and stuff from my old management who look after One Direction saying, congratulations, we've seen you in the top 20. I've gone goosey thinking about it because it's, it's, a, it's an achievement. And classical albums very rarely get one or two or three in the mainstream charts because you're in a pop world. I know Andre Ryu does very well, and there are a few handful of artists that really dominate. What's most important about this album is... There are eight or nine songs on there which I, myself, love. And, I, and I'm not ashamed to say that. I, I love hearing them. I'm proud of them. It's all about stirring the, the emotion in the listener. And uh, I, I think we've done that with a lot of the tracks on One Day Like This. You mentioned targets. So what's your next target? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few goals. I would like to play every single concert hall. In Britain, <laughs> starting here in the Chatlong, or <coughs> I work my way up. Uh, no, it's seriously. I I enjoy performing at different venues. I mentioned today, um, not on the radio, but to the, to the audience that we are performing at the Royal Festival Hall, London. I never performed there. It was only one song, but we got to perform there. And uh, there will be an upcoming tour in October, November. I'll be revisiting a lot of the venues I've already played. But there's one that I haven't played, and I've always wanted to play, at the Birmingham Town Hall, which was closed for many years, especially throughout my years of study in Birmingham. And I often said I want to perform in that hall, because it's beautiful. So we'll be going there on my tour. Uh, I think the 1st or 2nd of November I'm there, and as I said, the tour starts in October through November. And then in April, May next year, there'll be a UK tour again, uh, going through other venues. That's an exclusive for you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a goal of mine Performing in all the concert halls And hopefully arenas Eventually, you never know You know, um, Alfie Bo has proved that you can Tour arenas uh, And Alfie is a good role model Because a lot of people knew his name in the industry But his albums were charting 60 yard 70 yard And then he had a hook He had a break And then he tops the charts and is touring arenas Congratulations, I mean, it's amazing and I love singing in arenas. Sometimes the bigger the better. You know, I love that. I love big productions. And 
there will be more albums, uh, but we want to release this album internationally as well. Now, you've been singing and taking part in well, all manner of things since you were very young. And indeed, you've sung on the stage at Trathlon when you were very young. What advice would you give to anybody who is even thinking of travelling the journey that you have travelled? It's, it's hard work, you know. It's, uh, you've got to have a passion for it. I, I would say you need some sort of talent. But interestingly, I... I during this, this evening's show, I showed clips and played clips of me singing as an 18-year-old. And it's not that good, to be, to be fair. It, there, there's, there's, a, there's a sound there and there's a sensitivity. But there's a musicality and feeling, which is important. Whatever it is, you need some sort of uh, talent, I would say. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult to get to a high standard in music. So, yeah, I would say dedication. Really want to do it. If you're torn from a young age, don't do it. Don't, don't put yourself through that. It's, it, it will be, it'll be torturous almost, you know, because you'll be knocked back, knocked back. And you need, you need, to, you need to have that thick skin and be prepared to be knocked back because it will happen, whoever you are. So you've mentioned numerous things that you'd like to do, numerous places that you're intending to go, future tours, one thing and another. So the world's still pretty good. Well, yeah, the, the world is it's a wonderful world. Certainly, and uh, I mean, I don't want to sound corny, but you only have to come to this part of the world and see the beauty around uh, uh, my home, my hometown, my home village. People, love, um, friends and family, great music, and opportunity. It's exciting. You know, things go wrong, but loads of things go right as well. The important thing is, is to remember the things that go right, not just dwell on the things that go wrong. You say it's a wonderful world. It is a wonderful world. And uh, it's, it's great to be alive, performing, and uh, see progression in a career. You've seen that tonight, um, those of you who've seen the footage. Uh, and yeah, it's, um, it's summertime, so I'm delighted. Well, I think on that positive note, I think we must say thank you for everything you've given us so far, and we look forward to what you'll bring us in the future. Ready, and thank you very much indeed for talking to Apple FM. My pleasure. Thank you, Philip.